Randy Rain here, and I'm often asked how I learn to do this stuff. Well, the answer is I learn by doing. I'm all self-taught. So that's what this is. This is Randy Robot Garage. So I have a little forge that can melt low temp metals like pewter, and I've played with it before. But I wanted to do a robot, kind of like the robots that I've been doing here with the plastic ones, but I wanted to do them in pewter. So if you go to the Reynolds Advanced Material website, which is where I buy my supplies, you can see that there is the Mold Max 60. Now the Mold Max 60 is made for pouring low temp metals into it, like pewter and tin. It's pretty good. It does. This is old. I've used this many times and it's still held up. So it is a great thing to do with low temp metals. There's a problem though and that is it does have a very low tear strength. So you could easily tear it. Even if it's new it still tears pretty easily. So it's a 60 so it's very dense. You really have to do two-part molds like this. You're not going to really do a dump mold, which is what a robot would be. So I was looking around on the website, and I was looking at the dragon skin. And I pulled up the technical information on the dragon skin. And it says, right here on this dragon skin in the tin, it, can it says right here it can handle low temp alloys. So as I was talking to the guys up at the Dallas store, they were kind of shocked that it actually said that, but they said, oh, I guess I suppose it could handle it for a while at least, because they, they can handle very high temperatures. So I bought some, and I tried it, and this is what I got. And here's what the molds look like afterwards. So let me take you through this adventure of the pewter robots. So here's my idea. I'm going to start with this piece of the little robot. You can see I've cut it off and it's flat here and it's filled inside. It has clay and everything so none of the silicone can seep in when I make the mold. But it doesn't have any feet. So I went to Blender and modeled out a bottom piece. Now I use Blender because it's, you know, it's a powerful piece of software and it's free and it's similar to what I learned to model on so this is what I use and then I printed it out and I used ABS plastic to print it out which is normally what I use so if I really want to smooth it out like I do on this one you can just take a jar put a paper towel on the bottom of it pour in a little bit of this acetone this is just a silicone mold that I have. The silicone won't react to the acetone and I can place my piece on top of it and keep it up off the acetone. Close up the jar and I just want the vapors to hit the piece. So to speed that up I can put it on the bed of my 3D printer. That will heat it up a little bit, create more gases fumes inside there. And just like that it's all nice and smooth. But I decided to go ahead and paint it, and I'm just going to use some of this hammerite. That's just because it, it leaves a very smooth surface, but also a kind of uneven surface. So it looks, you know, more organic and more like a metal forged or something. I don't know. It no longer looks like a 3D printed piece, and that's all that matters. So now it's time to glue it onto the body. Now to make a mold, I do want to raise it up just a little, some, maybe not that much. Thank <laughs> you. 
Maybe rubber cement is not the best idea because of what I'm about to do. Better reinforce that. go with some clay all the way around. Okay, so when you mix mineral spirits with silicone, it doesn't inhibit the silicone from curing. And then once it's cured, you can take the piece out and let the mineral spirits evaporate and the mold will shrink. That's why I propped it up a little bit because I want it to shrink evenly because if there's a thicker part of the silicone it's going to shrink less. It's, so I kind of want it even so it shrinks evenly. So I think you can go like to half silicone, half mineral spirits but since this is a two-part evenly mixed silicone I'm just going to go with it like this. This will be plenty. I'm going to go ahead and mix it in. It still should cure just as good, and if I put it outside, it should cure really fast, because it's pretty hot. And I was worried that the mineral spirits would act as a solvent and break my rubber cement and start pouring out. That didn't happen. But one thing I didn't think of is what happens with the mineral spirits acting on that hammerite paint. So, no telling what this is going to look like. uncured section there. Now the reason I went with this silicone is I should be able to get this out without cutting it. It's very... Mm, come on out of there. Yeah, there's a lot not cured in there because of the hammerite it looks like. I guess I'll put it outside for a while maybe it'll cure a little bit and that will cure and start shrinking. All right well I've got it to cure so that part is not sticky anymore it is cured and maybe it's shrunk a little bit I don't know doesn't seem like it 
But I'm really curious to see if that has shrunk at all. Well, it's shrunk a little bit. Meanwhile, I've been using my other mold. And I made this little guy. And then I remembered that I had done this and shrunk this little guy here. And this is probably going to be my last little guy because I see bits, chunks of the mold. This mold's tearing up. It's not going to last much longer. Neither is this one. I poured some plastic in here. What did I get? Hmm. I wonder. I have an idea. I think it's pretty good actually. I kind of like it. It's the perfect size that I need. So once again, I'm using this Dragon Skin NV. So this is supposed to be three pounds of pewter. I haven't weighed it, so it's what I bought it as. I'm just accepting what they said it was. Anyway, it's time to head to the shop.
Yeah, I don't know why. Some came out really well, some didn't. And how burnt they are doesn't mean anything. Some of the best ones aren't very burnt, and some of the better ones are. And then I scrub it with some soap and water and a brush. And now take some zero zero steel wool. And that's as good as some of these are going to get. So my father was a mechanic in the Army National Guard in Texas, and he left me a lot of tools. And in there are these little stamps, and this is what they used to, you know, stamp uh, numbers, engine block numbers and whatnot onto metal. And that's what these are for. These are stamps. So I'm using my father's National Guard stamps to put R's on the bottom of every one of these little robots. So there you have it. What do you think? Uh, Dragon Skin 10 NV made for low temp metals? Guess for a little while. It's not like the Mold Max 60 though. I guess that's really the way you should go though. I don't really think, unless you're doing just one, I don't think so. But anyway, I got some little robots out of it and I got a one big robot here have another one, but I don't think I was going to keep it. I think this is the only big one I'm going to get. Got a bunch of little ones. So what am I going to do with all these little robots? Well, they're Patreon gifts. So, if you like this video, I sure would appreciate a like. If you want to see more like this, then you need to subscribe. I want to thank these people right here. These are the patrons. These are the people who, some of them are going to be getting these, depending on what tier you're at. You can go check it out. There is a link below. And then you can be another one of these great people helping me do this, showing you what happens when you pour alloys into Dragon Skin 10 NV. But there you have it. That was... So here's a Harbor Freight wired Dremel rotary tool brush after three, three and a half robots. Going on the fourth robot. That's what I got. That is an actual Dremel brand. Let's see how long this one holds up. Okay, so I've done seven, seven robots. And that's what the Dremel brand is left with. Here's the original. Here's a, they came in a two-pack. Barely even seeing things happened. 